All right, so this is the back part. You don't really need to do the drawing or anything like that. So the first one I asked you, if you have a closed two liter bottle of soda that has soda inside of it, you put it into water, it starts off at 5,000. Where would, where do you think it'll end up? Well, most of you, again, understand, again, it is a closed two liter bottle, bad two liter bottle. Looks like a drumstick. Um, many of you started off by saying, okay, well, two liters is equal to 2,000 ml. So if I put it in, the water is going to go up because it's pushing water out of the way, right? It's going to go up to 7,000 ml, like that. Now, we're going to have to come back and change this. So again, I'll explain it a little bit. So what do we estimate the object's volume to be? Again, your initial estimate is probably 2,000 ml. Okay, so then we skipped over to this one. You had an empty but sealed. So this had soda inside of it. And so later on, we're going to come to find out that 2,000 mLs represents the soda, but not the bottle. All right, anyways, let's move on to number two. Um, number two, it says you have a sealed two liter. Okay. What is its estimated volume? Well, how much air? How much air is inside of here? Well, if 2,000 mLs of liquid fits in here, well, then 2,000 mLs of air are in here. So 2 liters of air is equal to 2,000 mLs. If you submerge this in water, you would expect the final volume to be 7,000 mLs because 2,000 plus 7,000, right? Um, and I'm going to link a video up here that shows like a visual representation of this, okay? So a visual. It's not going to use a 2 liter. It's smaller, but you'll get the idea. Um, what is the object's estimated volume. Well, for most of you, again, you're going to think 2,000 mLs. Now, here comes this one. In this one, it is an open 2-liter bottle, and we'll put the cap right here, and you put it in water. Now, what's going to happen is if you have a graduated cylinder with 5,000 mLs, okay, and you put this soda bottle inside of here, and you dunk it all the way in, the water is eventually, and this is the problem with the flask that some of you are having, the water is going to rush in, fill it up. It's going to fill up the empty space. So what's going to push the water up? Okay. It's asking, okay, right here it says, for the question above, you might need to ask me something. You just know how much space fits in here, 2,000 mLs, right, of air or soda, whatever, gummy bears. What you didn't know is how much space the bottle takes up. So the bottle, let's just say the bottle takes up, just the plastic itself, takes up 200 mLs. That would mean it would raise from 5,000 to 5,200 mLs. Now, we have to go back and adjust this because we originally thought it's going to move 2,000 mLs. And you're right, the water inside of here would move 2,000 mLs and the air inside of here would move 2,000 mLs, but what it doesn't account for is the plastic, which is 200 mLs. So really, it's going to move 2,200 mLs. The air will move 2,000 mLs, but the bottle, the plastic, will move 200, so 2,200 mLs, like that. All right. What caused... So it's referring to object A. What object or objects cause the water to move? Well, there's two things. One is the soda. Two is the plastic. The combination of the two, 2,000 from the soda and 2,000 from the plastic, cause it to go up 2,200 mLs. Explain why it did or did not push the same amount as bottle B. Did it push the same amount as bottle B? Bottle B only pushed up 200 mLs. This pushed up 2,200. Why didn't it? Why did it push up more? Well, it pushed up more because bottle A is soda and plastic. Bottle B is plastic 
only. That's why it pushed up more water than this one. Why did it or did not push up as much water as this one? Well, yeah, why? So pushed up same. Push up same. So I'm trying to shorten some of this, sorry. Um, bottle A. Okay, what caused bottle A to push up water? Well, it was the soda and the plastic. 2,000 mLs plus the plastic. What about bottle C? Well, it's the air at 2,000 mLs, because 2,000 mLs fits in there, and the plastic. So they're the same. All right. Down over here, write a few sentences about bottle C. Okay, what objects caused the water to move up in the sealed one? Well, it was the air and plastic. Okay. There was 2,000 mLs of air, 200 mLs of plastic equals 2,200 mLs. Did it push up the same as bottle A? Yes. Why? And I'm shortening this up because I'm just going to put A and I'm going to put bottle A because then it's going to mess me up. Bottle A is equal to soda plus plastic. Bottle B is equal to air plus plastic. Both of these are 2,000 mLs. Both of these are 200. Did it push up as much as bottle B? No. How come? Because, oh, sorry, this is bottle C. Sorry, bottle C. So bottle C is air and plastic. Bottle B is only plastic only moved up 200. So this moved up 200 plus the 2,000. This only moved up 200 because the water rushed in. Okay. All right, other side. Unit for length, easy. Base unit, meter. Every time we use length, centimeter, millimeter, blah, 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 blah. This, you can research. Look it up online. Okay, so if we're going to measure pencil, what are we measuring it? Centimeters, kilometers, meters. Like, meter is like... <laughs> gigantic. Centimeters is probably a good measure of a pencil. But what about the science building? You don't want to measure the science building in centimeters. What about the distance to San Francisco? You don't want that in centimeters. Could you? Sure, but you don't want to. How thick a paper is. Okay. Look it up online. What is the base unit for mass? Easy. That's the gram. Centigram, milligram, kilogram. All right. These right here. Look. Centimeter, centimeter, centimeter. It's just a multiplication problem. So this is 20 times 20 times 1. That's it. And that gives you centimeters cubed. These two numbers should be the same. How come? Centimeters cubed and mo mean the same thing. That's it. So just use your calculator. Do 20 times 20 times 1. Done. All right. What about this one? Okay. Use your calculator. 17 centimeters times 5 centimeters times 40 centimeters. Again, centimeter, centimeter, centimeter. Put your answer here. This is the same answer. Now, last one. 2 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 20 millimeters. Wait. This needs to convert it into centimeters. So we could have centimeter, centimeter, centimeter. So use your step chart. I'll give you the answer here. I don't mind. But know how to do this. This should be 2 centimeters. So it should be 2 times 10 times 2. So 2 times 10 is 20 times 2 is 40. This would be 40 centimeters cubed, which is also equal to 40 mLs. So the other one should look the same. All right. What about increments? Increments, you need to know what each line is counting by. I apologize because on the video here, it probably looks a little fuzzy. I'm trying to clear it up. Okay, there we go. So here's what I need you to do. Again, just sometimes it's a guess and check. Start with 1 ml. So 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. Okay, the increments are 1 ml. Make sure you put that ml there. All right, I'm going to do the last one. All right, so here's 40, here's 50. Okay, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. They are still going by 1 ml. So what about this one? So 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Nope, it's not 45, so it's not going by 1. So 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. It's going by 2 mLs. Don't worry about object volume because you can't really see the initial volume. All right, that's it.